welcome to the show. I am your host, Brian Lee Watley. Our story begins tonight with our very special guest, best-selling author in Russia, Nina Guest, with her book, Don't Disappear, Part 1. It is a first of a four-book novel series that presents the factual story about a Russian girl's life from the beginning of her pregescence through her perilous times and her kidnapping and being sold into slavery to her maturing into a young woman. The reader takes this journey through Vika Zatkova's eyes, revealing a life torn from innocence to one that is plagued with unimaginable pain, abandonment, and lost romance. As a published author in Russia and now in the United States, Nina also loves to write fiction, nonfiction, movies, and poetry, along with this book being adopted into a TV miniseries in Russia. You will find her story full of heartfelt and inspiration to hopefully bring more awareness to the world about an issue that happens in every country in the world, and we need to put a stop to it. After reading the story, you'll want to find a way to help others in the halting such a horrific crime. Our musical guest tonight is Helena Starr with Breathless. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome, Nina. How are you doing today? Hi, Brian. I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk to you. Your book is absolutely amazing. Um, the stuff that's entailed into it and all the, the, the drama and the love affair and uh, the suspense and the action, the stuff that goes into it. Um, I'm excited to get to it, but before we do, can you tell our guests a little bit more about yourself? My name is Nina Guest, and I'm a published uh, Russian author. My book is uh, Don't Disappear Part 1, like, as you said, uh, uh, was only a bestseller. It has been adapted in a TV miniseries, and uh, <clears throat> very soon, in uh, about a uh, couple of weeks, uh, part two will be released in the rest of the series uh, by the end of the summer. So this is a this is a, a multi-series part, and it's actually from Russia, and, and you're from Russia. Um, how is it like over there? I've, I've traveled all around the world, but I've yet in, had a chance to get to Russia. Um, can you tell us a little bit about where you lived, um, the the beautiful scenery, things like that? Oh, Russia is a very different country from America. <laughs> and it is especially, uh, we're lucky now the Berlin Wall is collapsed, and nowadays it's uh, it is like a day and a night different uh, from communist era. And borders is open and uh, uh, you can, nobody can force you to work. Life is good. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about the winters there? I always hear the winters are so harsh. Is that just in the north part of it or is it like that all over or, or what? How is the weather? Oh, it's about 70% of Russia is a pretty harsh climate, but uh, uh, in the south uh, where Black Sea, it's a wonderful climate, it's like over here. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I have a friend of mine who's who's from Russia, and he used to kid around with me back in college, and he would say, um, "You are, he would definitely kid us around with, and he would say, um, you Americans are so weak. In Russia, we drink vodka with our cereal for breakfast. And <laughs> you see, <laughs> it's the stereotyping grasses, <laughs> like what <laughs> Oh, goodness! <laughs> and I was like, vodka with your Cheerios? Okay, I might have to try that one day. And in college, I probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. It's pretty cool. I live in Russia and uh, uh, everywhere, west, east, and uh, north pole. And uh, I still have a nightmare to not fall six months cold, cold. <laughs> oh my god! <goodness>. Night. <laughs> well, um, I live in Lower Alabama, in Mobile, Alabama, and it's pretty warm here. And I used to have to do um, training, military training and stuff while I was in the army up in 
um, the northern part of the United States, like up in Colorado and in uh, Utah, different places like that, and it would just snow and snow and snow, and oh goodness, I could not stand. I don't think it got as cold as it does in Russia, but um, I, I'm just not a cold weather person, so the fact that you, <laughs> you, get used to it. you don't have choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So besides the book, I I hear that you also like to write poetry, which is a favorite of mine. Um, I love to write poetry as well. Is there what do you have planned coming out with poetry? Is this just a hobby, or do you have a um, another book coming out with that, or um, do you have a piece? I have. I think it's just a hobby because uh, you publish Mirasa uh, poetry. I I just put. Uh, Poetry with uh, much with my book. All books have uh, one poetry, uh, but uh, it's difficult to translate uh, into English, and I don't do that. <laughs> in the English, I don't have enough <laughs> English <laughs> vocabulary to write in English. Mm. Well, since Russia is your first language, Russian is your first language, and um, English is your second. Do you think learning the English language was difficult? compared to the Russian language? Most people say uh, the English language is really, really tough. Is that, did you find that true? Mm, it will definitely help if I uh, start English as in in, in a childhood. So that time, when the, I was young, uh, enough. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I can say it is a tough language. Mm, probably we uh, lazy study. <laughs> well, I love your accent, and you sound actually um, better than some of my redneck southern friends here that I can understand. So I can understand you perfectly. That's why I was wondering if if it was difficult to understand, because I can understand you perfectly fine, and so your English is great, considering it's a second language, and you learned it a little bit later. So congratulations on that. That's, that's pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. I need this for this support. <laughs> I love accents. I'm an accent person. I just I just love listening to them. So I'm like in awe listening and talking to you right now. So I'm like, oh, this is so great. <laughs> I don't hear my accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling with vocabulary. <laughs> You're like, what accent? You got the accent. I have a southern accent. So I don't know. If I had a couple of beers on me right now, you'd start hearing me say y'all and y'all too and all that other stuff. I'm living in the South, but... Um, I try not to have an accent either. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, a doctor. I not speak too much and not go too much mm. in the public and stay at home computer and me. Pat me, no accent. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I learned about you when I was doing some research is the fact that you had some very exotic pets. And I thought it was so adorable and so cute uh, that you had a sugar glider as a as a pet. And it's the, the business logo for your Don't Disappear Productions. And you also have another pet um, that's a prairie dog. And can you tell us about having those two types of animals as as pets? I I had sugar gliders. I bought this accident. It was so little, so cute, and uh, uh, has a tail. They have long tail, scooby uh, tail, and half a tail was uh, eaten. <laughs> so oh. they, so yeah, and I'm like, oh, feel so pretty. And, and this is a very good pet. And I, he was about uh, six years to live with me. And uh, after his dad died, I bought a prairie dog. Uh, they exotic, both exotic, look alike. But prairie dog is uh, oh, just amazing. How he's screaming, how he's real like a dog. <laughs> Uh, I've seen them at the zoo. I've seen prairie dogs at the zoo, but I've never heard of somebody having one as a pet. And so whenever um, I was reading this, I was like, wow, that is so cool. That is so awesome that you actually have a prairie dog. As a, I guess that's a pet yeah. dog, maybe. So, um, it, They're so cute, yet fast, you know, sleeping on the back. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> now, I hear that um, one thing that some people say about different animals is about whether or not that they're actually good pets for certain people, like whether you're busy or um, not so active or something like that. Like I have a German Shepherds and they're very big dogs and so 
I, I don't have them in the house or anything, and you know they're very hyper and stuff like that. Do you find that having a prairie dog is good for, say, somebody like yourself who is a busy person? Yeah, it is exactly for prairie dog for busy people. When one, when you have time, you can pet. He will run in behind you, <laughs> and when you don't have time, put them in the cage and that's it. Forget him. Don't forget him. <laughs> <laughs> Put him in a cage. Forget him. <laughs> Just don't forget the food and water and stuff. <laughs> food and water, yeah. Oh, he will goodness. not give you to forget him because he's screaming. He screams? When he sees, yeah, when he sees you, he's every time screaming. And sometimes you can hear like, uh, like, it is, mom, <laughs> like, mom. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, it is beautiful. It is like a little squirrel. A little squirrel, only without tail. <laughs> okay. Now, as a cage, do you have them, like, does he, how's the cage work? I mean, prey dogs normally live in the ground, so. A wonderful in the cage. It's a uh, uh, two-story cage, running back and forth, and uh, in the second uh, story, uh, Floor. Uh, I made uh, a warm rug, and he sleeping on this warm rug, <laughs> electric that, rug. That is so adorable. I swear, that's so precious. Uh, yeah, it is. It is wonderful. <laughs> okay, so a, about your book, you've got this amazing, amazing book that's out here, and it's called Don't Disappear Part 1, and it's the re-edited part that's out there. Um, it's become a mini TV series in Russia. It's been number one in Russia. Um, it's it's great. It's gaining popularity here in the U.S. There's there's so much talk about it already um, that's going on. Um, so let's talk about this. One thing that I noticed when I was reading uh, the different parts of it is you dedicated this book um, for to a certain group of people for a certain reason. Can you talk about why you dedicated it? Ah. Uh. Uh, uh, for person uh, who helped me uh, uh, to re-edit it, Dave uh, McLaughlin, who said, uh, you know, my uh, people read it, and uh, I think it is not right. You you better read it and make it uh, uh, read more smoother. And uh, <clears throat> it's dedicated to my husband, Bill, who's... Uh, Oh, he is the uh, light on my path. <laughs> he helped me a lot. Yes, he's very supportive. I, um, <clears throat> he's like a, a real American. What I see uh, from Russia, he's exactly like America. <laughs> he's uh, funny, strong, very uh, smart, very uh, motivated, kind of like, uh, and very, very, very. That's awesome. Congratulations oh, to yeah. him. I, I'm lucky. You also did yeah. you also dedicated this book and um the book is about for everybody who has any chance to read it and I encourage everybody to go out to Amazon and buy this book. It's a great book. Um it's about a Russian girl who happens to go through it, it talks about her life from the the beginning of her pubescence through her perilous times of her kidnapping and she's being sold into slavery, then maturing into a, a young woman and the love affair that she has with I'm a KGB officer and stuff, but the fact that it's a true story, you kind of dedicated this to also to people. From my understanding, is that they're um, oblivious to what's going on and not seeing disaster striking, and then with perseverance, they kind of overcome the darkness and they change their fate. And I think that's a huge message as well that this book talks about. And um, so, uh, um, j just just the whole book surrounding that, I think it was. Pretty good. Yeah, it is a true story, and it is uh, revealed the dramatic change in the Vika Zotova's uh, 14 years old life, and uh, it is a very interesting story. Okay, so the, the the main character. Life. Oh, go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Oh, so let's talk a little bit about the main character. Um, it's <laughs> Vika Zotova's. Am I saying that correctly? Oh, did I really? Oh, nice. <laughs> I, 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 I completely slaughtered that one. <laughs> um, 
Um, now she's, like you said, she's a 14 year old girl, um, and she falls in love with this KGB officer. And can you go into like how they wind up meeting? Like she was part of the circus or something like, right? Like that, right? Yeah. So how, how does she meet this guy? Well, in the gym. Uh, she was in the part of the circus, and uh, he was the officer. They uh, share the same gym. And they meet over there. Now, the guy was, now she's 14 years old, and the guy, I think, was like 24 or 25, so like 10 years yeah. difference kind of a thing. And then her brother, like, finds out and freaks out, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good. So I assume that that was kind of frowned upon. It, it's definitely frowned upon here, so. Um. Yeah, I can't say it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it is uh, not about uh, what's normal or not. It's Understandable. I always believe that love kind of transcends age. Um, now there are legal laws and all kinds of other stuff, of course. But um, I've always said age is age is not a barrier for love. And from reading the book, it's like she met this guy, and they kind of met like instantly, kind of like bypassing each other. And he stared into her beautiful green eyes and her red flowing hair and her beautiful lustrous lips, things like that. All the characteristics of this 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 young woman. Um, and it kind of mesmerized the guy, and then like their eyes connected, and um, you know they were both kind of stunned or something like that, and they wanted just kind of talking. Um, in writing the story, is that kind of how? You, am I saying that right? Am I am I understanding the story right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, it's real right. I mean, it's just what happened like uh, a few years then bumping each other. It's just uh, they see each other and. I can say it is like a uh, first, second, probably uh, they fall in love, uh, but I think it uh, happened like that. Uh, he's uh, memorized your eyes, your beauty, your fourteen years old. Now, this is also, um, to mention to everybody, this is pre-Glasnost Soviet Union, right? Yeah. Why is it that so is, important? It is before the Berlin Wall collapse. It is the end of uh, 1970. End of 1970. Very end, yeah. Okay. Why is that so important for everybody to understand that? Uh, so important to... Uh, you uh, uh, how naive she was, how naive was the uh, uh, Russian people when uh, they uh, completely isolated, the culture different, the people different, it is uh, very wrong to be isolated from the world and didn't know what is going on and uh, uh, be aware, uh, and especially that uh, Trafficking and slavery, you think it will be never uh, happen with you. Now, the gentleman that she meets, his name is, his. the officer's name is Sergi. Am I saying that correctly, Sergi? Yes, Sergi. Okay. Um, and him being a KTB officer, and he was kind of new as being an officer, a young guy as well. And... He basically became the love of her life. I mean, it was kind of one, one of those moments where he completely, from my interpretation of the story, he completely um, respected her, but was just so mesmerized by her beauty and everything else that it wasn't until a little bit later to where he was actually really announcing his love for her and um, things like that. But, um, And he was a true gentleman at first. Yeah, he is a uh, love in your life and... Uh... Um, he is a gentleman, he is, uh, uh, I think he uh, gentleman most cares about his career, <laughs> <laughs> about the job, and that uh, keeps him, uh, <clears throat> he 
careful the keep a distance because of her age uh, or he will ruin his career. Now, um, I mentioned earlier that the brother, her brother didn't like this at all, um, and her mother didn't like it at all. I, I don't think anybody will like it, 14 years old, start facing to win something. <laughs> well, na and nowadays I completely agree. Um, and it would, it would have been even the late '60s, the first part of the 1970s, like you mentioned it. But if you look back in like American history, um, or even back in um, Europe's history, yeah. or something like that, you know, 14 years old, way back that time, you know, in the 1800s or something like that, you know, you're pretty much an old woman by the time you hit 20. Yeah, they grow up uh, faster. Yeah. But I think because of harsh environment. Right. Then uh, more difficult life. Exactly, exactly. And so that's what's so interesting about the age time frame for, for um, her. And, and again, for all our listeners out there, this book is about this girl's story about you know falling in love and then all of a sudden something really terrible happens to her and she gets kidnapped and she's taken to another foreign country and she perseveres to come out of all this and fighting through all of it. Um, and so the, the love aspect of the story, I think it's incredibly important for people to understand but, and also for them to keep their eyes open, because it was her friend Lena who invited her to take, or sorry, invited Vika to take the, the this assignment in the Middle East, right? Yes, Lena was uh, uh, a work at GDP officer too, and they invited uh, Vika to go together, and uh, that's the assignment, and uh, they make it big mistake. Now, what was what was so much of the mistake? Can you go into? I don't want to give the whole book away, but I, I love you know the <laughs> drama part of it, <laughs> like the don't don't don. Ah, that book is exactly like a raising uh, awareness. So be careful. Uh, see who you run around you. Uh, be careful uh, what to drink, what to eat. Uh, So when she gets kidnapped, can, what about else about whenever she gets kidnapped and just her her strength to persevere to um, strive to return back to her family? Uh, I ahead. think uh, uh, she's lucky enough to manage to survive. In the Middle East, is uh, uh, very uh, has a very long history as the center of the world, and uh, uh, their culture is significantly different from uh, West. You know, and it is like a different planet. There is no right for women, and it is a male-dominated culture. And if you, if uh, a girl over there, it's uh, hard to uh, manage uh, way back. So, it's, and especially at, at the age that she was, I think that's also oh, yeah. again yeah. Um, a very and strong point. Yeah, this is uh, again, as I said, you, if uh, some happen, and I, I want to encourage young women. And no matter what the circumstance, uh, never give up. Uh, like your own life is more important than anything else. Unfortunately, nowadays, in the, uh, thousands of women were victimized each year. And unfortunately, I completely, I mean, I completely agree with that. And unfortunately, that is such a sad case. And it's, it's not just over in just Russia and, and in the East and stuff like that. That actually happens here in America as well, and a lot of people don't necessarily understand that, and that's what I think is so great about your book, um, being printed in the U.S., and, you know, um, you getting a chance to be on our show, and all the other shows you're doing, and the, the publicity that you're pushing for this awareness for this, because for what she goes through, and everybody needs to remember, this is a true story about a girl who, you know, fell in love, and then went to do an assignment, and wound up becoming a slave in a foreign country, and her desire to return back to her family, and to Sergi, 
Um, cause Sergi wasn't part of this, right? It was just an accident that happened. Um, and so I don't want people to think that it was Sergi that did it, right? No, they're not CPA, and he's the, uh, he didn't push you for that. I think it is like a young, uh, people, they pretty curious. They want, uh, to something, uh, for people, for themselves, how they must, <laughs> like they can do something. And, uh, sometimes they do it not much step. Now, in order for her to, she's constantly thinking of ways to escape. Um, and like, will she make it back home again? And she goes through all these different adventures. And Vika, she must use her courage and her beauty in order to survive these things. Can you talk about on um, some of the ways that she used that and some of the adventures that she went on? <laughs> I don't want to give too much away. I just like creating drama. <laughs> I don't think I, I want to explain because of the subject. I describe very well in my book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, kind of. <laughs> she definitely uh, used uh, all her knowledge uh, to survive, uh, to manage back, uh, how to, to uh, control your temper, how to control your uh, conversation, your speech. Every word uh, can be lost. So I think that's also very important as well is um, a person's will to survive and a person's um, desire to live and to continue to drive on allows them to be able to, I guess I, I would like to say, um, grow in intelligence much faster than what they normally should grow in intelligence in the ways of the world and you know societies and cultures and stuff like that. But what she does... Um, it's, you know, it's actually pretty inspirational because she wants to survive. She wants to return to her family. She wants to, um, she, and unfortunately, she has to do things that she, most people would never do. And so um, I think that yeah. the, that's a very important fact for people to understand is, like you said earlier, never give up. And that's one thing about Vika. She never gave up. And she continued yep. to do what she had to do um, in order to continue on. And I think that's very, very strong. And again, you know, bringing this public awareness to people out there about human trafficking, this is a true story. And this happened to a 14-year-old girl from Russia and got moved to the Middle East. And um, Vika continued to be strong and survive. And that's very, very important and very, very powerful. Yes, you're lucky. You know. <laughs> you made it. Now, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. No, no. Now, there is a second release coming out um, for Don't Disappear Part 2, and it continues with some of the exciting stories on, on, on this piece because it is a novel and a series. Um, and since this is a true story, is this somebody that you, if you don't mind me asking, is this somebody that you know? Um, or is this, this the public, um, obviously the public out there because there's many TV series in Russia and stuff like that now. Um, is this somebody that you know? Yes, I knew the person very, very well, and always uh, felt her story was a lesson in life that uh, uh, needed to be new. And I wrote a series of three books in six months during 2004, and immediately published uh, part one and half. Okay. So for this um, this young girl out there, if you could ever, if you ever get a chance to talk to her again, you know. Please give her my condolences for everything that happened. And, but again, you know, thank her for her inspirational, very inspiring, just spiritual um, life strength that she had in order for her to overcome this kind of stuff. So it's, it's a, truly an amazing story. And everybody, go check it out on Amazon.com because it's titled Don't Disappear. And it's, the, it's part one. It's the re-edited version. You can find it out there. But it's, it's so great about this. Now, we talked a little bit about, just to bring some more awareness about human trafficking and stuff like that, does this happen a lot in Russia? Because it happens here in the U.S. Is it? Is this a common thing over there? Oh, unfortunately, uh, thousands of women uh, were victimized each, each year, and uh, it's happened all over the globe, and uh, uh, human slavery and trafficking, unfortunately, in America, too. 
Now, is it brought out into the public? It's because we have this thing that's called an Amber Alert here in the U.S. I don't know if you've heard of it yet, but it's basically this little girl that got abducted, and they passed this law and this new alert type of system. If a child is abducted, um, they fire off this warning signal, and it gets broadcast on radio station TVs and even along the highway signs and stuff like that. There's an Amber Alert about this young person. Um, this is her picture. This is her age and everything. If you've ever seen this person, please contact um, the authorities right away. Do they have something like that over in Russia? I don't think so. I don't remember if they have uh, that kind of alert, and I can't compare uh, the American system to uh, help the women, help the victims, help to find uh, with the uh, uh, Russian system. It is uh, very, very different. But they, I think it was still now doesn't have this uh, uh, alert, the TV, or, uh, radio everywhere. So what could we do to help that grow over there? What could people do in order to help push that and kind of get that kind of awareness out? And not just necessarily, I'm not just streamlining Russia here or um, America, but anywhere in the world. So those of you that are listening in China, those of you who are listening in Europe, those of you who are listening in South America or Africa, um, I'm talking about every place where you are. Um, what are some ways that you think that we could do in order to help bring this awareness out and protection of women and children out there for this type of human trafficking and situations? Because I, I understand that she's obviously a very true story, very inspirational story, but I'd like for it to be the last story that this happens. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's weird. Uh, unfortunately, people is, uh, <clears throat> people is people, to curious, to young, to uh, sometimes the wild, uh, the, the most, uh, I think, important, uh, talk to your children. Help them when they became a teenager. Help, help them realize life. Uh, help them grow up and uh, knew the danger of What and about... Especially, uh -huh. Oh, no, go ahead. And especially as a young girl, I think it is like uh, you every time have to keep your eyes on the children and uh, uh, explain the life, not only life but to America. You have to realize it is a uh, different life, completely different life out of border. I, I have two children, and um, one's a six-year-old and one's a two-year-old, and I am so very protective of them. And yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't I don't let them out of my sight no matter what I always say maintain visual and it's um wherever we're, if we're just at the park or if we go to the grocery store or wherever else I mean we walk our kids to school um, up to the steps of their classroom to make sure that they get in and everything else I'm so very protective of something like this happening so um, and for other other parents out there as well who are the same way or need to be the same way I think it's it's a lot about education and just realizing about society and you can't just necessarily take things for granted because it's not like back in um, certain times to where you could just say and uh, be honest with you I don't know if there ever was a certain time that some of this unfortunately didn't happen that's what's so scary about it but you have to uh, what make sure kids are aware not to scare them or anything like that but just make sure that they're aware about talking to strangers there is also this other thing here in the United States called stranger danger and yep. It's about, you know, don't go up and talk to strangers. Don't, you know, be careful of your awareness and things like that. Um, you have this quote that says, if you don't mind me quoting you, I think it's a marvelous quote. It says, you, you had said, always be aware of your surroundings and avoid putting yourself in a compromising situation. But if the unthinkable does happen, people should use their minds and willpower to overcome whatever person or other obstacles are in their way and making sure to never, ever give up. That's a very That's powerful right. quote. That's right. Never give up. Doesn't matter what happens. Just think about people who love you and try to go back. Yep. And I, I try to in, 
educate. I try to educate, and I also coach four-year-old football, so I'm, I'm around kids and stuff like that, and I always try to educate people on, and I used to, actually used to be a military police officer. I was in the military one time, and so it, it's very important for us to have our own sense of security, and that education and being aware of your surroundings is part of your own sense of security, and what you talk about in your book, or don't disappear, um, I think that security is a, is an issue, because she went off, she was drinking, Mika was drinking, she wasn't paying attention, and all of a sudden something happened. And kids today, unfortunately, they at 14 years old around here, they still do that. You know, I hear all the time on the news, uh, two teenagers got drunk and were arrested last night at so-and-so and so-and-so. I'm like, why? Why are they doing that? I just don't understand, because there's so many problems that can happen. Because they unwear the danger. They think it is a new, wonderful life, and they're very secure. Uh, I think it is never uh, yuri to talk to them and scare them sometimes. <laughs> what, <laughs> and the real life, what, what is real life? Uh, then it is too late. Better be yuri. I've always... I, d I did have a talk with my son the other day. He was actually going on a school field trip. And I'd said, you stay exactly with your teacher. You don't talk to strangers. You don't, um, you know, I, I don't care, you know, who it is. If it's not somebody you know, you know, stay away from them. If somebody tries to come up to you to um, talk with you about anything else, you go straight to your teacher. You find a police officer. You find... Um, you know, an authority figure that you're familiar with, somebody that you know to talk to and you get over there. Thank goodness nothing happened at all on the, on the field trip. And thank goodness, and, and I'm really knocking on wood here and crossing my fingers and, and thanking God Almighty that nothing's happened you know, to my children. But again, I want to make sure that people understand that this is a true story about a true girl and it's a real life situation that we have to deal with in our society. Not just in America, not just Russia, but countries all over the world. Um, are there non-profit organizations that you're involved with or anything um, in helping Not push yet, this book? But I would like to help people to survive in a dangerous situation. There's and a... Oh, go ahead. Participate some, <laughs> some group. <laughs> so if you could... Um, there's, a, there's various houses... Well, they're, they're called houses. They're safe houses, really, um, in different cities and stuff like that to where battered women and children can go. Um, now, most of the time, that's domestic violence or something like that that happens, but unfortunately, that's a sad situation in and of itself. But, again, if you know of people who have gotten abducted or kidnapped in any particular way, it's such a serious offense here in the United States, and it should be in other countries. And so, again, going back to bringing public awareness worldwide on this is, is huge. Um, do, you, do you think it would benefit if we wrote to our politicians more or to our government status or statutes in various countries to bring this up? I think uh, the violence against uh, a kid, especially, has to be uh, punished more uh, severely. Because uh, kids are a very vulnerable uh, part of our society. And we have to protect them. And I think the best way is to uh, uh, find it more harsh. Um, like, like what? Do you think people who do this kind of stuff should ever get parole? I think they they have to stay in the jail. Okay. Because it is very serious stuff, and the Kids is very uh, uh, trust, very uh, naive. That's a good word. Um, yeah. Children they are very naive. Very, very naive. And uh, you, uh, God, has to protect them. And uh, there is no way to protect uh, and uh, change minds that uh, uh, criminals uh talk to them or something. No, the punishment will talk. I agree. I definitely think um, punishment should be harsher than what it is today for people who abuse women and children. 
um, kidnapping, human, human trafficking, definitely. There's no reason in the world why we should have this situation about people being sold as slaves or people being sold, you know, no matter what kind of slave it is, whether it's a work slave or any other type of slave. Um, I think it's a, a very horrible act that people participate in, and we've got to do something to be able to stop them. And I think your book is a, a memento and a, and a moment pusher for people out there to understand and to raise awareness with. And that's another reason, why, again, I'm so very glad that this is being printed in the United States. And it's number one in Russia, and I hope it becomes number one. And I have no doubt that it will eventually become number one on the New York bestsellers list and a lot of Thank the other you, book charts. <laughs> it is so Thank inspiring. You. Yeah, and I just want uh, to remind you, uh, listeners, to get uh, the re-edited Don't Fear Part 1. Okay, the re-edited part. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason why you say that is, again, to get the uh, re-edited version? It's because uh, the biggest challenge was the uh, association translation. Translation, correct. Oh, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so that is properly edited, in fact, I, and I pulled it from the market after the first publishing to have it re-edited, and now it is a, it's a good book now. Okay, so the first the first version out was out in Russia, and then the second um, part, or the first part that was out in the U.S., um, just it was just a bad translation coming across from Russian to English, and then um, so you re-edited, re reworked it, um, it's much better now, and the the book that I read, I've got the read the version. It's, it's absolutely amazing. So, um, yeah, I think everybody should go out to Amazon and buy it and check it out. And be prepared for what you read in this book, people. This is a true story. And while it's got some exciting moments and some drama and some love affair and all the other stuff, keep in mind this has actually happened. And so, yeah, yeah. And also, they uh, can find uh, uh, this uh, re-edited part one, first chapter, on my website, on com. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, now, is there a movie that's being planned for this? Because you got the book out, you got the mini TV series. Do you have a movie in the works for it? Because I can completely see this as a movie. I love the visuals and stuff like that that's in it. I love the drama. I love the. It's got all the characteristics out there. The pers the personifications of the characters, everything that's out there. Is do you have something planned? Oh, Brian, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to something. Choose for movie, my book. Uh, not yet, not yet. I hope. Okay. Now the character, from the description in the book, she was um, she was young. She had bright green eyes, um, red hair, very pretty face, stuff like that. So if you're you fit that characteristic out there, and you're an actress, and you want to play this part, you know, you need to get in touch with um, with Nina Guest at DontDisappear.com. And tell all your directors and actor friends and stuff like that in order for this to become a movie because it's one of those pieces that will just truly shock you. I'm a very visual person, and when I read it, I see it. And that's how I understand things. And I, I completely see the stuff that was happening with her. Um, as, as the fun times were fun and the gruesome times were gruesome, um, it was just something that was so eye-opening and so awareness that I think whenever people read it too, and that's why I say I think it'll make a great movie, um, they will, it will come across really, really well. So I'm excited. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it has to come I out know. in the U.S. first. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. The movie has to come out in the U.S. first. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I just, I just want to make sure it makes to a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's very soon. Part 2 will release, and it's very serious thing, too. And the editor, uh, I like to write uh, about this, like, uh, to write a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> like this, <laughs> something, something. But uh, very important, like she said, it is, uh, you feel Russian even in English. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, I, I love this, uh, this kind of good story. I, I, love, I hope everybody will like it. And, uh, in. Um, so we have the second book coming out, Don't Disappear. That's, now, that's coming out on Russian bookshelves first. Is the second 
the the part two of Don't Disappear? Is that coming out in Russian first, or is that coming out in America? Oh, yeah. The, it's the best seller in Russia, uh, too. And, uh, in America, it will about two weeks. Okay. Will release. Okay, well, that's good. Now, is there any appearances or um, um, book signings or anything where people can go... Um, Meet you, get their book signed, you know, things like the motivational speeches that you go out there bringing awareness to this particular topic. Um, any places like that? Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> With my English, I feel motivated to speak to you. You sound great. And, uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I. Understandable. Um, now, people can contact you on your website at ninaguest.com. That's n i n a g u e s t dot com. And you also your production company is don't disappear dot com. Correct. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yes, and then you're on Facebook and Twitter. You're at Nina Guest. Uh, sorry, just at Nina Guest. Um, and then all your books are being sold on Amazon. Um, things and like that. Candle. And oh, that's right, that's right. You can electronically download. That's the new media nowadays. So you can download it on Kindle. Um, so everybody, go out there, check it out. It's a great book. You're gonna love it. Um, you're gonna get wrapped up into it. Now it is 360 something pages, but I guarantee you, once you get into this book, you're gonna fly right through it. It is, it is very well written. Um, it just kind of leads you to the next page, to the next page, to the next page, to where you really don't want to put it down. It's that intense and that mesmerizing to keep you trapped into it. Um, and so when you look at it, you're like, oh, I don't have time to read this. You will basically read this in a couple of days or a day and a half or something like that. You won't want to put it down. It's that good of a book. Um, so congratulations on writing a good book, Nina. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I told many readers when, uh, when I go to 2010, uh, book signing events and uh, sold off uh, about eight a book signing event all over the country, and I ask uh, people, like, uh, don't start to read uh, on the evening. I don't want, like, in Russia, sometimes uh, my friends call me at night, are ah, you sleeping, and I cannot <laughs> read your book. <laughs> I told you don't start in the evening, <laughs> especially at uh, the last week of, uh, uh, about, uh, like, uh, chapter... <laughs> That's a great author. That's a sign of a great author right there. When they call your house and say, you know, why am I read this book at night? Now I can't sleep. You know, you owe me blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's a great author right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, So, um, do you have any final thoughts you would like for all of our listeners to know about this book, Don't Disappear, um, Part One, that's out there, um, or about your work, you know, your life in Russia, things like that? Do you, um, or about her and this this issue about human trafficking that's so very, very real and so very um, true that we need to bring public awareness to the whole world and bring it out more to where this gets stopped? Do you have any final thoughts you would like for people to know? I'm after Nina Guess of Book Don't Disappear, and I wish the world would become a better place and uh, no one will disappear. Very well said. Well, Nina, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Um, thank you so much for your book. Thank you so much for your time, um, the things that you're, you've done for this, this situation at hand. Um, for coming on to our show and talking about it. And I cur again, I encourage everybody to go out and buy it. Um, buy also, buy a copy for your friend. Whoever your best friend is, buy them a copy as well when you go and buy it for them. Um, read it, discuss the book, and then pass your copies on to somebody else or buy them books. Um, this is a book that really should get out there. Um, it's a very serious situation, um, very great story 
um, much love and light to the person who this book was written about for all her trials and, and tribulations and, and effects that she went through, unfortunately, that she had to go through. But to bring this to people's awareness and to help stop this, I think the book was was well written and truthfully written for that. So um, congratulations on, on a great book. And if you, like I said, if you ever get a chance to talk to her again, give her a big hug for me and just let her know, you know, I give her my love and light for her to um, continue on. And she's a very inspirational person, and I thank her so much for it. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you for inviting me on your show. You are amazing for us. I, <laughs> I don't time it so proud of course. I thank you very much. Oh, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. You have a very beautiful night. You too. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Please welcome our musical guest, Helena Starr, with Breathless. Our sponsors. At Taylor Gifts, we do customized monogramming and embroidery. We can monogram anything from a simple one name on a bib for a baby to a customized logo on a company shirt. We can make gifts for your wedding entourage and gifts for your friends. Label your children's items for school and put names on jerseys for sports. If you have items of your own you want to monogrammed and embroidered, we can do that. Taylor Gifts are sewn with high quality thread on a professional embroidery machine. So go to the website www.taylorgifts.net, call 251-391-4354. Email sales at taylorgifts.net, visit us at ETSY, and Facebook us. We are ready for your orders. Welcome to WROM, Realms of Music Radio and Social Network. We support independent artists and talk shows, hosting a large discussion forum and an artist gallery. We also have a large social network combining the best of 
Facebook and MySpace into one. So make sure you submit your music to us and create a profile to promote yourself today. That's realmsofmusic.com, the best of music radio. The Ghost Tales Television Network, GTN. GTN is designed to give the paranormal TV and filmmaking community the opportunity to showcase their talents and creations. If you believe you have what it takes to create your very own TV show and or short film and you would like the opportunity to showcase your creations, you may contact us at ghosttalestv at gmail.com or call 901-377-7166 for more details. Make sure you visit ghosttalestv.com. GTN, America's paranormal superstation. Jackalope 105 FM on jackaloperadio.com. Your alternative to the grind of internet and FM radio. When we say diversity in programming, we mean it. Lots of stations brag, throw out a hype, and pad their numbers. Well, we don't. Accept no limitations. When you truly want awesome 24-hour radio, tune in to Jackalope and rock your routine. Jackalope 105 FM on jackaloperadio.com. Thank you for listening to the show. I am your host, Brian Lee Watt. I hope you have an amazing weekend, and I look forward to seeing you next time when another story begins. Until then, love and love.